Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at the Honden deck and for those that don't know, the new historic anthology expansion recently introduced the Honden cycle, which is a cycle of legendary enchantments with the shrine subtype and they all get better the more shrines we have in play. We've got Honden of Infinite Rage, which at the beginning of our upkeep deals damage to any targets equal to the number of shrines we control. Honden of Cleansing Fire gains 2 life for each shrine. Honden of Knight's Reach makes the opponent discard a card for each shrine we control. And then Honden of Seeing Wind's probably the more exciting one, draws a card for each shrine we control. And Honden of Life's Web makes a 1-1 colorless spirit creature token for each shrine we control. So the goal of the deck is to get all 5 shrines in play so we can deal 5 damage, gain 10 life, make the opponent discard 5 cards, draw 5 cards, and make 5 spirit tokens at the beginning of each upkeep, which is of course pretty powerful if we can make that happen. And then another card that makes this combo even better is Divine Visitation as a 5 man enchantment that says if one or more creature tokens would be created under our control, that many 4-4 four, four white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance are created instead. So instead of making 1-1 one, one spirit tokens, we get to make 4-4 four, four flying angel tokens with vigilance, which is quite a bit better. And then Divine Visitation also works quite well with Castle Ardenvale, which can also make 1-1 one, one tokens that then turn into 4-4 four, four angels. So to make this deck function, we need ways to search up all these different Hondans. You can definitely make builds of the Honden deck where you just draw a lot of cards or maybe play multiples of the same Hondans. Although then you run into situations where in the late game you're just drawing into more Hondans that don't do anything. So instead I prefer the approach where we search up the Hondans and we've got 8 tutor effects to help us do that. We've got 4 copies of Angelic Tutor, which lets us search our library for any enchantment card and put it into our hand. And then we've got Mastermind's Acquisition, which lets us search our library or sideboard for any card that we want, including the Hondans. And now of course if we're going to spend that much mana on all these tutor effects, our deck is going to be way too slow. So to speed up the deck a little bit, we've got Fires of Invention as another very powerful addition that we can also search up with our Igelic Tutor. So if we don't have Fires of Invention in our opening hand, we can maybe turn 3, cast Igelic Tutor, search up Fires of Invention so we can play it on turn 4, and then we can start deploying the Hondans or using our other tutor effects to find the missing Hondans to assemble all 5 of them. So that's the main idea behind the deck, and then we also happen to be a Kiruga, the Macro Sage Companion deck, which also synergizes quite well with Fires of Invention and all these enchantments that we're playing, so we get to draw more cards when we play Kiruga, and then the Companion Restriction says that our deck can only contain cards with Convert Mana Cost 3 or greater, although we do get to cheat a little bit by playing Bone Crusher Giant, which we can still adventure for 2 mana to maybe take care of an aggressive start from the opponent, and then play the 4-3 afterwards, which also lets us draw an extra card with Kiruga. Ruga. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 2 mana we've got our Stomp, at 3 mana we've got our first Sweeper with Deafening Clarion that can deal 3 to everything or maybe give our creatures lifelink which is relevant with Keruga. We've got Honor the God Pharaoh since sometimes in the late game we might draw additional copies of Fires of Invention that we don't need so we can discard it to the Honor. Also it lets us amass one so if we have Divine Visitation in play instead of making a 1-1 Zombie Army token we get to make a 4-4 Angel token which is quite a bit better. And then we also have our Idyllic Tutor to help us search up Fires of Invention. And then two copies of Banishing Light as a removal spell that we can also search up with Idyllic Tutor. Then at 4 mana we've got another Sweeper with Shatter the Sky. We've got our Mastermind's Acquisition alongside, of course, a bunch of sideboard cards that we'll go over in a second. And our Fires of Invention, which is a key card in the deck, of course. Our mana base, as you'll see, doesn't allow us to cast the blue and green Hondans without Fires of Invention. And then we've got our Divine Visitation and the five different Hondans. And then looking at the mana base, we've got the Savai Triome, which we can also potentially cycle, which is great in combination with Fires of Invention, since we can still spend our mana cycling the Triome, and it doesn't count as casting one of the two spells. And then we've got the four Sacred Foundries and four Godless Shrines, so we've got 12 of the basic land types if you count a Triome as well, and that way our uh, check lands will come into play untapped most of the time. So we've got two Clifftop Retreat, which checks for a mountain or plains, for Dragon Skull Summit, which checks for swamp or mountain, and for Isolated Chapel, which checks for a plains or a swamp. 
and then for Castle Ardenvale as a great mana sink in combination with Fires of Invention as well, so we can still make 1-1 tokens every turn besides casting 2 spells, and of course uh, nice with the Divine Visitation. And then taking a look at our sideboard that we can access with the Mastermind's Acquisition, definitely a lot of room for customization. I made sure to include one of each Honden in the sideboard and one Divine Visitation, just in case something happens to the copies in the main deck, although if you're searching with Mastermind's Acquisition you typically want to be searching one of the Hondans out of the main deck, otherwise you risk drawing into a second of the uh, same legendary Honden, which you don't really want. And then we also have a copy of Alpine Moon to potentially shut down Field of the Dead. Could also be playing Blood Sun instead, although that does shut down our uh, copy of Castle Ardenvale, which we might not want. Although the drawback of Alpine Moon is that it's more easily dealt with by a Blast Zone, which most Field of the Dead decks play as well. We've got Graph Digger's Cage against Graveyard decks. We've got Kaya, which can also double up as Graveyard Hate and can also be a nice answer to 1 mana cost cards. Unmoored Ego against combo decks. Then we've got a bunch of Hondans, and then Casualties of War as another powerful card we can cast with Fires of Invention in play. Immortal Sun to shut down Planeswalker decks, since we don't have any Planeswalkers ourselves in the main deck. Runus Ultimatum to destroy all non-land permanents the opponents control. And then uh, Bojuka Bog as another Graveyard Hate card that can also double up as an extra land drop in case we just want some more lands in play for Fires of Invention purposes. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. We've got the early Bonecrusher Giants. And then fires into Shatter to stabilize. Don't have any Honden yet, but I'm sure we'll find some along the way. A Lobstruck Beast makes a human. Probably gonna end up uh, stomping here. I might take one damage, just in case they have a more valuable creature worth stomping. Double Burning Tree, alright. Well, the Shattered the Sky is looking better and better. Do I want to stomp a Burning Tree here? Yeah, I don't mind. Save ourselves a bit of damage. I'll hold on to the Banishing Lights. Plan is to go Fires into Shatter next turn. Steel Leaf Champion. We are missing Castle Ardenvale to combo with Divine Visitation. So this turn... I can play Bonecrusher Giants... And... Then maybe Banishing Lights... The Lobstruck Beast, I could also get rid of the 1-1 token since they have another Lobstruck Beast and they might not have another 1-1. But... I think I would rather just play it safe and get rid of the actual beasts. And then next turn I'll be able to play Keruga with a ton of permanence in play to draw cards with. Hope to find Castle Ardenvale. Alright, Brontodon can deal with the fires. But we've got a backup, so it's not too bad. And there's my castle. And then Castle plus Visitation, make a 4 for Angel each turn. And our opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Can shoot her for Fires of Invention. Got our first Honden in hand. Facing a Nomori deck with the Lenor Elves. So, this could be the. We know Tal deck trying to cheat Angras Marauders in play, as we see a Legion War Boss. And yeah, on the draw facing a Lanor Elves without Stomp from Bonecrusher Giant means we're gonna be pretty far behind. But hopefully this uh, Shadow the Sky can catch us back up.
And down to Vanguard. Very resilient against our sweepers. Banishing Light, one of the few answers. Alright, so how much damage are we taking next turn? Quite a lot, but... I think the plan's still the same. Uh oh, there's Winota, so we were probably dead. Let's see what they hit. Haktos. There's the Angras Marauders that deals double damage. And uh, Agent of Treachery too, because why not? Alright, well, that seems reasonable. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus deck. So, yeah, I mean, we'll need to draw a third land, but... On the draw. I think we gotta keep this. And then Idyllic Tutor for Fires of Invention is gonna be the first order of business. Cycles secluded step. It's a lot of cycling lines. I see your opponents playing the treasure hunt combo deck. So instead of uh, Thassa's Oracle now, they're treasure hunting for Zenith Flare, and all the lands have cycling, so they can just discard 20 lands with cycling and kill us with the Zenith Flare. So the goal here is going to be to Masterminds Acquisition and get uh, Unmoored Ego or some other way to stop the combo. And uh, we should be able to do that. So it doesn't matter too much what I do here. Since we've got the fires and then I can acquisition for Unmoored Ego. I'll get the Blue Honden for now. Let's get a sideboard cards. And I think Unmoored Ego is probably what I want. And I don't know if they have a backup game plan for when we exile their Zenith Flare. Plays Lurus. Name Zenith Flare. So, opponent's library is just lands and treasure hunts. Tectonic Reformation as well. And then we can stomp. And that should be pretty much game over. And our opponent agrees. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. No Fires of Invention or Hondens, but we have some good interaction early on, so... We'll try it. This hand's not going to be great in every matchup, but against any more aggressive creature deck, this hand's quite good. A Janice Welcome, so some sort of life gain deck, so our interaction should be quite useful. Can maybe stomp on a Janice Pride Mate in response to the trigger before it picks up a plus one plus one counter. Let's 
their ascendants. Sure, so no need to stomp. I can just clarion next turn. Plenty more sweepers coming up. Now Heliots can be a problem. That's where we need Banishing Lights. Can still use Stomp in response to any plus one plus one counters. Dawn of Hope, alright. So our opponent came prepared for a more grindy matchup. Soul Warden. Yeah, I guess we'll Stomp that. Yeah, we're drawing a lot of sweepers, but it's not really what I need right now. A Johnny Strength of the Pride turns on Heliods, makes a token. Yeah, point with a lot of non-creature permanents here that are difficult to interact with. So Shatter the Sky not looking too good. Can cast Shatter. We both draw cards. That doesn't seem great. Can Stomp in response to them making another token. I guess that's what I'll do. Could also stomp a Johnny to kill it. Maybe I'll do that actually. and decline to draw a card with the Dawn of Hope, so they've got different plans. Sarah Ascendants, a bunch more triggers. So I could decide to ch chum block this turn, or I could take the damage so I draw a card from Shattered Sky. Hmm, seven damage is a lot though. But I probably need the card draw in the spots. I'll take it. Alright, fires is a good draw. So we get to keep playing next turn, maybe play Karuga. Would have loved to stomp that a Jenny Sprite made in response to all these triggers. Second so play Bone Crusher, play Kiruga just for a bit of card draw. And then deal with the Pride Maid later. Hope to draw into a castle Ardenvale. Alright, Tutor means next turn I get to. Maybe search a Banishing Light to get rid of one of their enchantments, or get my first Honden. Opponent is at 34, so if they ever draw another Ajani Strength of the Pride, they can use a zero ability right away. Does not get rid of enchantments, luckily, only creatures and artifacts. So Banishing Lights would be reasonable. I think I just get the blue Honden to start drawing some cards. Yeah, 
heal it back into a creature. And I'll probably chum block. And there's Castle Ardenvale. Gives us something to do with our mana. So let's shatter. And then probably just play the Bone Crusher. And then we're looking for Divine Visitation to combo with our castle. And any additional Hondans. Mastermind's Acquisition could also get Runa's Ultimatum. Doesn't deal with Heliot, but deals with everything else. Opponents definitely going off. Again, I could take the damage so we draw a card when we cast Shatter, which I'm probably gonna be forced to do. Yeah, also works out better if I find a Mastermind's Acquisition, because then I get to keep the Bone Crusher Giant when I Runus Ultimate him. Divine Visitation to make some 4-4 Angels. Alright, let's Shatter. And I think I can even use both castles now. We'll have to chum block Heliods. Our true strength lies in our friendships. Yeah, the Ajani's welcome is definitely paying off for the opponent as opposed to a Soul Warden which would have died a long time ago. Tribunal. Okay. Goes after Visitation. So I guess we'll make the Angels now. If our opponent played Tribunal first before using a Jani, then they would have been able to maybe use a zero ability after I make two Angels to exile my board and kill me. Don't know if they've played a land for the turn yet and might have another Jani waiting for us. But I guess since I'm chumping Heliot anyway, I might as well chump with a 1-1 one -one token, just in case they have another Jani to exile my creatures. It's gonna be Pride Mates. So we're still hoping to find Acquisition at some points. Extra Honden doesn't hurt. I guess I'll Clarion just for the life gain. Our souls will remain bonded, friend. 
And we can still double activate castle. So yeah, this is a pretty sweet game. Very grindy. Some games in Historic end on turn 4. Some go very late, another Jani. You have the zero ability from a Jani, got rid of enchantments. They definitely would have won this game. A pure soul can inspire others. They probably also have another copy of Heliod in hand at this point with how many cards they've drawn. A Ranger of Eos to get a bunch of one drops. Sarah Ascendant's pretty big threat right now, so if we don't draw something soon, we might be dead. Mastermind's Acquisition for Runus Ultimatum, probably the most straightforward answer to the situation. Gets double Sarah Ascendant. All right, there's Mastermind's Acquisition. Get a sideboard card. And I think uh, Ultimatum's what I want. I have lost Get my Visitation back. And now we're making two Angels per turn. So we're looking good. Just want to get the green Honden now, so we can make three angels per turn with uh, just the Honden of Life's Web. Make some angels. Looks like our opponent may have disconnected. I guess the Runus Ultimatum was the straw that broke the camel's back. All right, so sadly we didn't get to deal the finishing blow, but uh, you can imagine how we would take over the game from here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. We've already got the fire, so we can shoot her for a Honden, perhaps. Facing a sparring construct. All right, so this is the... Tempered Steel deck. Do we see a Steel Overseer? Take one. It's gonna be a Stone Coil Serpent instead. I'm still forced to Clarion because if they play Tempered Steel I wouldn't be able to kill Serpents. Although, never mind, Serpent has protection from multicolors, so Clarion doesn't deal with it. So, Tempered Steel is gonna hurt, but I probably just tutor for Banishing Light now to get rid of the Tempered Steel if they have one. And then next turn we can go Fires into Banishing Light. If they don't play Tempered Steel, I just Exile Serpent instead. And keep Clarion for when they maybe play a Steel Overseer. They might also be playing all that glitters, but they're not going to play it when we have a Banishing Light in hand. There's Tempered Steel. So I probably have to get rid of the enchantments. If they have another one, we could be in trouble. Also, I can Igelic Tutor for the second Banishing Light, I guess. They are also splashing blue, sometimes for the Pose Deploy, Psy, Master Thopterist, or uh, Dovin, the three mana Planeswalker. There's the Alder Glitters. Shatter the Sky, pretty good draw. Otherwise, I could have tutored for Banishing Light, but this seems like a cleaner answer. And then I'll tutor for probably 
the blue Honden. Could also get the white one to gain a bit of life. Or get another Banishing Light in case they have more Stone Coils. Don't have Castle, so don't want to get Divine Visitation. So yeah, let's get Seeing Winds. And then I'll probably cycle the Triome. Next turn, go Hondon into Keruga. Casket just to increase their artifact count for a Glitters. That's fine. Double Caskets, alright. Not the scariest turn. Hope to draw Castle Ardenvale. No castles. And there's Ginger Brutes. Alright, so if they have all that glitters, we are dead. And there it is. Alright, GG's. Well played. Not much we could have done. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a uh, reasonable hand. Just need land number four for this Fires of Invention and then we're off to the races. Two acquisitions for the Hondans. Facing Blood Crypt and Ghost Quarter. Interesting combination. I see it's a Reanimator deck, discarding Ulamog and Agent. So we're gonna wanna get some Graveyard Hate as soon as possible. Banishing Light is a decent answer to Ulamog, since they don't get the EDB effect when they reanimate it, but uh, yeah, if they steal or land with Agents, that could be annoying. Another Agent and Ulamog go to the Graveyard. And Stitcher Supplier, so... Opponent could be playing Unburial Rites, in which case I'm helping them by killing Supplier, but just in case they have Blood for Bones, I want to kill the creature that they can sacrifice. And yeah, there we see the Blood for Bones. So, don't see any trace of white mana, so they might not be playing on Burial Rites. For now, I guess we'll play the Bone Crusher. And next turn I can fires and get maybe a Graph Digger's Cage with the acquisition. Bojuka Bog could also be decent. So next turn they could reanimate their scary thing. I'm just gonna get Cage. Opponent doesn't know what we searched up. They could have the hasty reanimation spell and attack me with a hasty Ulamog, but I think I'm okay taking 10. And then next turn we can Cage plus Banishing Lights. If they agent, they can't really steal anything too backbreaking. Steals the fires of invention, sure. And a tombbound lich. All right, land is good, so I can. Uh, Play cage, and then what else are we doing? Can banishing lights 
probably don't want to get rid of my own fires. Can shatter the sky and draw a card. Sure. So now my opponent's gonna have to hard cast their agent of treachery. And now I could Acquisition for another Fires of Invention. Although they've already discarded a lot of agents, so I don't know how many they have left. I guess they still have two agents in their library somewhere. Opponent's gonna blow up Castle Ardenvale. And we don't actually have any basic lands to search up, so that's unfortunate. All right, let's fires into Honden probably. The fact that they use Ghost Quarter probably implies that they don't have Agent of Treachery they want to hard cast, otherwise it doesn't make a ton of sense. All right, so let's Keruga. And then probably tutor up another Honden. Let's get the black one, maybe. And we can activate Castle. Zero point on eight mana. They're pretty close to hard casting Ulamog, so that's what I want to prevent with Honden. Yeah, Cage is going to say no to that. <laughs> All right. Well, GG's. And there we go. The utility of Mastermind's acquisition. All right, so we got to see a bit of our Honden deck in action. Sadly, didn't get to assemble all five Hondans in play at the same time. Problem there is that our opponents will usually concede by the time that happens. I've had one practice game where I've actually pulled it off and even had the Divine Visitation to make five Angel tokens per turn, which was pretty sweet. But overall, I've been pretty happy with how the deck plays out. Definitely my most successful Honden deck. I've tried a bunch of different versions that were a bit more green-based with Enchantress's presence but uh, those felt a little bit clunky and relied on drawing the Hondans naturally instead of searching them up, so it was a lot more difficult to assemble all five of them, unless you play multiple of the same Hondans, but then in the late game you're just drawing infinite Hondans, and uh, you're not really doing anything else. So that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.